Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One on One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we have a question from Jim Fairby from Port Huron, Michigan. Jim asks, I'm a beginner photographer and I'm interested in macro photography. What do I need to get started? Well, Jim, that's a great question. In fact, a lot of people have been asking about macro photography. And so in this episode, we're going to talk about the basics of macro photography, just the things you need to get started. And for those of you who don't know what macro photography is, it's when you take shots of something that's really small and you magnify it. So it could be something like a bunch of thumbtacks. It could be a single thumbtack stuck into the wall. Or a lot of people like to shoot uh, bugs like this one. So I shot this one uh, earlier this week. This is a little bee that was camping out in front of our offices. Well, to do all this kind of stuff, you need four things. You don't need all four, but all four will help you really get the best results. So the one thing you need absolutely for sure is a lens. And you need something that's called a macro lens. Now, there are all different types of macro lenses. So the one I'm showing you today is just one of many that you have at your disposal. And later on in the future, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going through all the different components on Adorama TV's product reviews to show you some differences between some of these things I'm showing. But today, we're just giving you an overview of some of the basics. Well, the lens, the one I have right here, this is a 100 millimeter macro lens. It's a pretty nice lens, but it has some features that I wanna go over. And these are made for all different brands of camera. Well, on this guy, we have a few things. On the first, uh, this, there's a switch on the side here. And what that does is it allows you to tell the, cam or the lens's autofocus uh, what to look for and how uh, large the range is when it's focusing. So for example, it's got the full range and it means try to focus from the very uh, first to the very last thing it sees, or you can start restricting that and saying, you know, only half a meter to infinity or a third to a half meter. And what that's saying is, I just want you to focus on this flower and forget everything in front and behind. And that can really significantly increase your autofocus speed. So that's what uh, most auto, uh, macro lenses will have a range selector like that. And it's really important. Now, sometimes when you're shooting macro photography, the autofocus is just really, really, uh, it's, it's too slow or uh, the movement in your hand is gonna throw off your focus. So most auto, uh, macro lenses have a really nice large focus ring that allows you to manually focus when you need to. And there's a lot of times you're gonna need to manually focus. So that's a really nice feature as well. Well, the other thing that we have on this guy right here is the autofocus and manual focus switch. And on macro photography, you'll be flipping that back and forth a lot because uh, macro photography, you really need to focus manually on some specific things. And we'll get into that when we do our demo. And then last, on this lens, there is an image stabilization uh, switch that turns image stabilization on and off. And if you're shooting handheld, you really need that for macro photography. Now, macro photography is really, really getting in close to uh, your subject. And so any movement is really going to be magnified when you're shooting a macro shot. And so image stabilization will help, but really, uh, unless you have a really fast shutter speed, you need to augment the stabilization of your lens. And for that, what you need is a nice tripod. Now the tripods for macro photography are just the same as tripods for any other type of photography, except for maybe one exception. And that is with macro shots, you're gonna be getting into all different uh, positions. You're gonna be getting really high and really low to the ground. You're gonna need to be able to shift your camera around in all different angles. So you wanna get one that has some flexibility of movement. This tripod we're showing you here is a Gitzo and it has all kinds of uh, different knobs that help you really position your camera. And we're gonna take this outside and show you just how this works. But there are a lot of different brands of tripods that will allow you to do the same thing. The point is you want one that really allows you a lot of flexibility in positioning and something that's really going to lock your camera down once you do have it in position. Now the, the third thing that I highly recommend is this little guy right here. This is called a cable release. And what this is used for is, uh, again, it's all about stabilization. So you have an image stabilized lens, you have a nice tripod, but the thing is when you take a picture, you can actually shake your camera uh, just by pushing the shutter release button. If you're taking a picture of a really small ant or a bee or a flower, uh, that movement can throw everything out of focus or it can induce some um, blur in your photos. So you wanna disconnect your hand from the camera. And you can do that with a cable release. When you push this, 
your camera takes a picture. So that's what that's all about. And these guys are about 35, 40 bucks to start out with. And then you can get some really fancy ones that do all kinds of other functions like timing and delayed response and uh, long exposures, etc. that are a little bit more expensive. But to start out with, they're very, very inexpensive. Now the last thing that you'll need uh, if you really want to take this to the, the end of the game is um, a nice flash. Now these flashes um, are not normal flashes. These are macro flashes. And so this one here looks like a ring flash. It totally surrounds the lens. And most macro uh, uh, flashes actually mount to the end of the lens. And there are different types of macro flashes. This one is a little ring that goes around the lens. Sometimes you have these two little guys that pop out to the side that you can adjust. Uh, the point is um, you need a, a flash that's dedicated to a macro flash. And so that's what this will do. The difference is these guys are going to be really, really close to the subject, whereas a normal flash is going to be up toward the back, a little bit farther away, and much too powerful. So those are the four components. Once again, it's the lens, it's the tripod, it's a cable release, and a flash. Now that we know all about the gear, let's go outside and take a few macro shots and I'll show you how to put all this together to get some really, really nice looking images. Well, we're outside here in just a bunch of bushes. That's the great thing about macro photography. You don't need something that's extravagant. You're looking for the small details in life. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first take a picture of this little tiny flower. You can see it's about the size of my fingertip and I'm just using my macro lens and that's all. So when I do this, the nice thing is I'm going to use manual focus because autofocus uh, is, is focusing just great, but there's a little bit of wind out here. And when this moves just slightly, it's throwing everything out of focus. So I can sort of track that using my manual focus. So let me get a shot of that really quickly. And here we go. Okay. And I'm shooting right now at an aperture value of 14. The reason for that is if I shoot any uh, wider, the shallow depth of field is so shallow that at anything less than 14, if I go all the way down to 2.8, it's just too shallow for me and it's really difficult to keep things in focus. And that causes some issues because even out here with bright sunlight, this is in uh, bright sunlight out here, um, I'm still shooting at a, a shutter speed of about a 20th of a second, which is a little bit too slow. So to get this shot, I really need to either increase my ISO or I need to add some light. So we're gonna add a flash here next because right below me down here, we have a nice ant hill. And I really want to get some shots of these ants moving around, um, but this is in the shade. And for me to get this, I really need to add some illumination. So I'm going to add my flash and then we'll shoot some of these ants down here. So now I've added my flash. And what that does is it add, uh, allows me to do a couple of things I can't do without one. One of those is now I'm shooting in manual mode and I've set my shutter speed to 200th of a second and my aperture value at f16. And that's really nice because that fast shutter speed is really going to help me from uh, wiggling around too much and getting some blur. And f16 is going to keep my depth of field uh, nice and uh, deep so that I don't have everything falling out of focus. Now the flash, because I'm in manual mode, is going to compensate for the lack of light that we have from the sun. I'm going to throw in some light to give me some nice uh, light on this ant hill down here. Now uh, I'm taking a couple pictures of these ants and we'll show you what they look like. So come here Mr. Ant. There he is. Oh, that guy's weird. All right, well those ants were a lot of fun to shoot, but they weren't really cooperating with me. And so to get some better shots, I've added my last two elements, my cable release and my tripod. And what I wanna do is instead of trying to handhold my camera and focus and wait for those ants to come out, I'm gonna actually uh, rig my tripod so that the camera is really, really close to where the king of the hill comes out. And then I can trigger it with my cable release. So let me do that really fast. I'm just gonna lower this down. Once I have it rigged, we'll show you how it works. Okay, now with this tripod, I can really get my camera down low. And with this uh, column here, it allows me to extend it. Then I've got a ball head. So once I get it in position, I can lock that down. And this is so darn close to this ant hill. Without a flash, I'm not going to have enough light to illuminate that because my camera is actually casting a shadow. So that's why you want this really, really close to your subject. And I can use my cable release to get the perfect shot. So I'm just waiting for those ants to pop out. And once they do, I'll have that shot. So I'm gonna camp out here for a second. When I see the king of the hill come out, then I'll get the shot and show you what it looks like. Well, once you have your system all set up, macro photography can be a lot of fun and highly addictive because you can just uh, go almost anywhere and find a great shot. We're in between a couple buildings. This is really an alleyway. And I'm just looking around the ground for uh, different things. Looks like I have a little bolt down here. So I'm gonna stick my tripod down. 
line this up and make sure I have a shot. It looks pretty darn good. So once again, I'm shooting in manual mode, 200th of a second, F16, so I get a really nice sharp image where everything is in focus. I've got my lens, my flash, my tripod, and my cable release. I'll take this shot, and there you have it. That's what you need to get started with macro photography. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. I hope you enjoyed our little outing to get some bug shots. Remember, if you have questions about photography or photography-related gear, you can send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. And as always, we have a lot more information at the Adorama Learning Center all about macro photography and photography in general. So please check it out. Well, thanks for joining us, and I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.